welcome to Concert Ideas on Limelight. My name is Cloda. And my name is Gemma. And we are going to be reviewing Girl, Girl in Red. Red. So we went to Girl in Red last night. Mm -hmm. um, she was playing the Academy. I believe she was originally meant to play a different room in the Academy. Was but it, it was like bumped up. Like yeah, that. because there was like demand for tickets, so they bumped her up to the biggest. Um, I wish I knew all the names of the academy. But the big stage in the academy. Yeah. Um, first, like, impressions of the gig? It was really good. Yeah? It was thoroughly I was boring. thinking, like, the minute we walked in, what did we notice? There's just a lot of young people there. Yeah, which There's is... like, like, a lot. And the whole bar, like, blocked off, but, like, black bags, yeah. so there was no alcohol. Yeah. Which is fine, because you got yeah. to really enjoy the music. But, um, it was nice, though, because I went to, I remember, I remember Jack and Kenna, and that was in the academy, um, and it was in the smaller room, and that wasn't over 18, and I was 17 at the time, so I got to go. So that was really good. Like I've been in the other position yeah. of being the young person that gets to go to a concert and have a good time with my friends. So I'm not hating on them. Um, they seem to have a really good time. They're really lovely. They weren't yeah. annoying. No, no, they weren't. So and it was kind of nice to just like actually just enjoy it and not be like going back and forth to the bar and like just kind of like yeah just trying in the to moment, like it exactly was, yeah that was nice um and we had a few drinks beforehand anyway so, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um but if you don't know anything about girl in red i honestly didn't know anything bar her music yeah. and i got from her music that she was a lesbian and that's about it well a queer woman at least yeah um, but you know more about her, so I let me go with this one. So she is from Norway. Her real name is very Norwegian. It's Marie Olven Ringheim. I'm sure that's pronounced very differently, but there I you go. Know. It sounded good. It sounded good. So she originally, because I just read her Wikipedia page <laughs> before this, she originally started making music under the name Lydia, Lydia X on SoundCloud. Yeah. Um, so she obviously just never wanted to go with her real name. <laughs> Which is like, fair enough. Like if I was going to start like on the music scene, Clodagh Reed is just a very Irish name. Yeah. You know, if you're going to put it on like this like international platform, you don't want to be, I don't know, not associated with your country, but just kind of be like a more like general name. That she transcends like, nations. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. I think it was a smart choice. Yeah. I, I didn't know where she was from. Even when she was on the stage, like I still didn't know where she was from until I think one of you said it to me. Uh, she yeah. toured with John Mayer, who she mentioned the John Mayer tour during the concert and everyone went, woo. And then she like commented on the tour yes. and like no one was sure if she was joking or not. I don't think she was. I don't think she was joking, was but joking. basically she said, <laughs> this like turned into the gossip of Girl of Red. Basically she said that there was a bit of an issue with the tour and basically 20,000 euro had been stolen from her to do with her merchandise or something, that she hadn't got the money from her merch. It was like a very, very like, small amount of time, but everyone's kind of like, what's Everyone's like, is she on? joking? And then she said afterwards, oh, I love joking with people. So like, she... Her band looked very stressed, they're kind of like, you should say you that. <laughs> Maybe. But um, you heard it here first, unless you rock Girl in Red, or she said it somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, she also toured with Clara. And she is very much the same vibe as Clara, yes, so I think that much. makes very sense, like a lot of sense for yeah. her to tour. That in Dublin, like that was like going like last year, a couple months ago, they did that. Oh wow! Yeah. I was like not aware of Girl Around at that stage. Like she, she gave us a little snippet of a potential new song. Oh that yes, was that was a great thing about the concert. Like she was, she was very much like chatting to like the crowd, yeah. and she was like, I don't know, guys, I don't. I don't know, like, will I try this out? And like, she just like did a little bit of a new song. Yeah. And I think it was just deadly that she was going from like, like full on like indie rock, like going crazy, and then just being like, okay, guys, so um, so yeah. <laughs> she has the sweetest voice ever. <laughs> um, but it was really strange because her songs are quite kind of dainty, like a little bit. I think they sound dainty. Dainty, but in like I don't a, know, a rocky dainty. way. In a rocky way, yeah. yeah. So she's singing like these really emotional songs. But she's proper, like, she headbangs the whole time. I really didn't think it would be, like, a rave concert. <laughs> I don't know if it qualifies as a rave concert. Yeah. But, like, one where everyone was jumping up and down, like, yeah. screaming the words. Like, I thought it would be more of, like, a swaying kind of one. But she really gets the crowd going. Yeah. Like, she was, like, 
jumping all over the stage like and like she as well I didn't realize she played her own instrument as yeah, well was which cool. was really that cool, was really cool. So and like that way she's like going up to like all the like other people in the band like yeah there was like, there was like two guitarists as well as her and she'd like go up and like, yeah, like just connection. having a good like, time yeah you could tell that they were like friends like that's yeah nice. it was really nice um she also like really connected with the crowd and it was like a young crowd so there was like a lot of like really like fangirly yeah. kind of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I was kind of cringing for them, but I was like, "Oh, that's sweet." And she wasn't like writing them off. Like, no. Someone like shouted up, like, "Oh, I made you cupcakes," and she's like, "The ones are like the mercy pan," and then uh, she made them. And then oh. as well, like she'd already mentioned that her like she had just eaten Indian, and it was like yeah. coming up. <laughs> just, just really like, like the first thing that she said. She yeah. came out and just like I just that's how she it. opened. <laughs> she's like, "Oh, those cupcakes, those are coming up too." And I was like. And like someone gave her an Irish flag. Oh, and, yeah. and then it's the. <laughs> yeah, that was like, she got a little chant going. She kept on getting presents and she'd like, be like, oh, thank you, thank you. Um, thank I'm, you. I'm just, I'm just gonna put it back here. Don't, don't feel bad. I just, I just wanna, like, just put it at the back of the stage. Um, yeah, that was really cute. Yeah, she was just a really nice presence. <laughs> Charlie is, it's, of course, it's an adaptation of the novel Crooks Being a Wallflower, but we've taken the uh, aspect of the music, which is a huge part of Charlie's life, so we've put that to the forefront of the production. So the live band is going to be playing the mixtape of Charlie's life, which is a bit like this. And um, yeah, so it's basically going to portray how Charlie's feeling in the different things which Leaf has. Yeah. That's, that's, that's my job at the Yeah. <laughs> So Love Always Charlie is very much like a coming of age story but it's kind of told in a different sense of we have our narrator Charlie but it's to an anonymous source he's writing these letters to help him kind of like cope with like the kind of everyday struggles that like we've all had in yeah. say secondary school and that sort of thing but there's kind of this underlying darkness, this kind of underlying sadness to Charlie's life that you kind of only see in snippets and not gonna ruin yeah. anything but like kind of you know it goes into like friendships it goes into first relationships it's dealing with it's the tra the classic tale of like dealing with things that teenagers should never have to deal with i found out the most surprised when we sat down with the mixtape it really feels like all of the songs were picked when he was writing them as if when he was writing a specific chapter that was the song that stuck in his head because it feels very authentic the music feels like it is what they would have listened to at the time and it is what he would have listened to when he wrote it there's a specific scene where they're in a party and there's a U2 song that plays and it's fantastic but it also just feels like it fits in. Where sometimes a musical song it's like well we have to get to the story so we're going to put this here to get the story further whereas here genuinely it's just what they would have sung, it's what they would have listened to on the radio. They're so amazingly picked and they really just help aspects and help you understand the story far more than you would have without them. Um, I grew up anyway with the musical theatre background so Sam has a song from the Rocky Horror Picture Show and as soon as I saw it on the list I'm like, yes, I love that! I don't do much singing in the actual show but um, Charlie says that his favourite song is Asleep by The Smiths um, and I was definitely quite like Charlie when I was a kid of just like shy and I just like I, I I went through an emo phase basically <laughs> <laughs> so like I can associate quite a bit with the like sad sort of like um 
I just, I don't want to be here type of songs. Um, and the ones that like, I don't know, I listen to like Evanescence and stuff. And I like, I've, I've never listened to the Smiths, but I can, listening to Asleep, I can definitely sort of relate to Charlie in that way. I was adapting the script um, into like, for like a theatre format. Um, parts of it were extremely natural, like, even though there was no dialogue, I could hear, you could kind of like hear what was being said, or like you could kind of like, you knew in your head like, oh my god, I've heard this fight before, I've heard this conversation at the back of a bus before. So it was kind of easy that way to, to write it, but there were definitely times where I was like, nearly plucking from own experiences, or like, you know, trying to keep those iconic lines in the show that the people know. Cast are wonderful. Yeah. Um, it know. feels like the characters have jumped off the page. Yeah. They've, yeah. Like, everyone is who we've picked. Like, it's especially too, because some of them are not. Yeah. And then they come out and they're speaking, and you're like, oh. It's Sinead McMullen, who's this bubbly, bright girl, and she's playing a goth, and yet yeah. somehow they're the exact same person. Exactly. It's, perfect. it's just fit so well. It's become a little family. And we've had a very short space of time to put on the show. So it's been rushed. Like, it's, it's felt like quite frantic, but it's wonderful at the same time because when you have such a wonderful group of people who are all so passionate about the one project, it makes it so much easier.